But the thing is that it also generates not just any uh, ATP, but also a special chemical called NADH. And where does that go? So this three carbon chains, two carbon chains figure. So what is that in actually? So our three carbon chains is what we just talked about. We talked about pyruvate, and then two carbon chains is a special molecule we call it acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA will come up multiple times in the future lectures. But what is acetyl-CoA? Well, again, here's our pyruvate molecule. And pyruvate is what you make, uh, or what you use to make acetyl-CoA. So pyruvate has three carbons. So when you kind of separate one of the carbons and lose it as carbon dioxide, now you have a molecule with two carbons. And this is acetyl, acetyl group. And acetyl-CoA is basically linking this special molecule called, called um, CoA, acetyl, and coenzyme A. And then, so acetyl-CoA is anchoring two of these carbons to coenzyme A. So joining acetyl-CoA plus the coenzyme A, it, or acetyl group plus coenzyme A is acetyl-CoA. And the thing is that acetyl-CoA is important for what you may have known as the, heard multiple times in, if you've taken any biology class, you've heard of the Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle, or TCA cycle. This is what is being consumed. This is the fuel for the Krebs cycle. All right, so then we have acetyl-CoA, and it has two carbons right here. But what is this CoA? I always get this question every year. So CoA is coenzyme A. Yes, that's true. But if we drew out the entire structure of coenzyme A, it's this entire structure over here. Do I want you to know this exact structure? Not for this class. Maybe advanced biochemistry classes might require you to draw this, but not for this class. But what happened, what you see here is that actually the acetyl group is very small compared to the entire acetyl-CoA molecule. And what, how do you get to that? Well, the thing is that you have pyruvate, and again, you lose a carbon through, by popping off carbon dioxide. Now you have this very, very small molecule. So what you're going to do is attach that small two-carbon acetyl group to a bigger molecule. And why is that kind of important? Well, because that acetyl group would be very, very small, it would be kind of hard for your cells to keep it in place and work with it. So my friend is a jeweler, and I like to use this analogy. So what we have, what he works with all these small little gems, and it would be hard for him to take his big beefy hands and use the, that to, to manipulate these small little gemstones and set them correctly. So what he often uses is this small little, I think it was a dab or daub. I forgot what he calls it, but it's basically a little stick. <laughs> I'll, I'll just call it a jeweler stick. But he takes a little, he's able to work with these small tiny gems by using this little stick that allows him to attach and grab onto it. And now that he has a bigger thing to work with, with this whole stick, jeweler stick and the gem attached to it, now he can move these gems with more precision because he has a bigger thing to work with. So your cell, this is what your cells you why your cells use CO-CoA. And coenzyme A is adding bulk to the acetyl group, so your cells have an easier time working with that acetyl group versus if this acetyl group was alone and loose and floating around in your cells by itself. All right, so this is the acetyl or the citric acid cycle. So, oh my God, the citric acid cycle is crazy, right? Now, you it has what you're doing is taking pyruvate, making acetyl CoA, and then now acetyl CoA is going to be consumed in all the metabolic reactions of the citric acid cycle. So from acetyl-CoA, you have these compounds, and citrate, isocitrate, alpha-glutarate. You have this, this is why it's a cycle, because you start, you have acetyl-CoA with two carbons. It combines with a four carbon oxaloacetate, makes citrate, and it actually starts losing carbons as you go from here to here. It loses carbon as carbon dioxide, or from here to here, it loses carbon as carbon dioxide as well. But it's also generating this molecule that we briefly mentioned earlier called NADH. It does indirectly generate ATP by, ma by actually making GTP, which can be exchanged for ATP. So what is it doing? 
It's taking the energy from the bonds within the CO CoA and using that, converting those energy from those bonds into a different form of energy. So you're probably wondering, like, oh, this is crazy. Do I have to memorize this? Is will I ever? And this is one thing: will you ever use this in the clinic, or will you use this to treat your patients? Maybe if they have a rare mitochondrial disorder. But the to be frank, the only times I've really used the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle is to take tests. <laughs> but I think why do they keep on using this? I think it's because it's pretty much scientific canon. It's not going to change. And I mean, every time I teach about this and every time I have to teach about that, I mean, it is recover, cover this as like, oh man, yeah, it's Krebs cycle, but it's like, why, why is it important? Well, the thing is that it, it's just showing you like, okay, how do you get these nutrients, break it down to chemicals and get extract energy from these nutrients? But will you actually need to know all those eight intermediates? <laughs> Probably not. All right, so then citric acid and Krebs cycle, yeah. Or yeah, registered dietitian, yeah. Probably dietitians for whatever qualifying exams. You probably have to know this as well. So many names for the same cycle. They're all referring to the same thing. Citric acid, Krebs, TCA, all the same thing. But this is also an important thing as well. Remember, what's our powerhouse of the cell? The mitochondria, right? But why is it the powerhouse of the cell? Well, this is one reason why it's a powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria take the pyru or take actually a CO CoA and extract energy from that. So what does it do? It produces carbon dioxide, ATP, and more most importantly, or actually very importantly, is that it produces NADH and FADH too. Now this is the citric acid cycle, and I think this is a simplified version in the Martini version. So it doesn't go through all those eight intermediates in the citric acid cycle. So again, you're taking that three carbon pyruvate we got from glucose. You're extracting acetyl-CoA from that pyruvate, and what's going to happen is that, or actually even before we get to the cycle, so this lead up. So glycolysis is done before this point, and this is a transition that's not quite in the cycle yet, but it is kind of important because you need to get to from three carbon to two carbon. So again, you lose a carbon dioxide molecule, but you also are able, so your cells can also trap a bit of that energy as NADH as it goes from pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So what's going to happen is that acetyl-CoA is going to combine with that 4-carbon oxaloacetate and then it's going to make a 6-carbon compound called citrate. And what happens is that metabolism happens and then citrate loses a carbon as carbon dioxide but as it loses a carbon it also generates some NADH. Then when you go from the 5-carbon alpha-ketoglutarate then you lose a carbon, but you also generate NADH as well. So notice there's a pattern here. Every time you're losing a carbon, you're generating an NADH molecule. And then as more metabolism happens, basically from this step to this step, you're just shuffling around the chemical structures, but you're also extracting energy from it as well. One of it is that you generate ATP via GTP. So first you generate GTP, then your cells can exchange it for ATP and more metabolism happens and chemical rearrangement and you're able to generate protons as well as well as some NADH and FADH too. So this is what's happening. You're kind of like taking the carbons, extracting energy, but you're also extracting further energy from the chemical bonds. So what's the, what's the punchline here? With per pyruvate molecule, you're generating carbon dioxide. So if you look at that original chemical equation, this is why you have that carbon dioxide. And why is it six carbon dioxide? Well, remember that you had one glucose molecule and broke it apart into two pyruvates. So what's now that you have two pyruvates per glucose, what's two times three? Six, right? So that's why it's six carbon dioxide. You get it from the citric acid cycle. You also generate ATP indirectly, but what's the main byproduct of the citric acid cycle? You generate NADH and FADH too. So you don't generate a lot of ATP from this as well. Again, this is like if you want to know from per glucose molecule, just multiply everything by two. 
So you generate two ATP, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to what comes next.